Hi there. Now for this question, we're told that the points A and B have coordinates minus 2, 11, and 8, 1, respectively. And given that AB is the diameter of the circle C, we first of all got to show that the center of C has coordinates 3, 6 for one mark. So if you'd like to have a go at this, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now to find the center, it would be the midpoint of these two points. What I'm going to do though is make a sketch for this question, even though this is just worth one mark at this point, because as this question develops, it's important that we get a feel for the question. So what I'm going to do, we'll just draw a sketch. So we'll have our y-axis here, okay, and we'll take our x-axis, say something like this, all right, and we'll mark on our points we've got minus 2 11 so it's not going to be accurate but just give us an idea minus 2 say across there and 11 up so we'll call that point there the point a with coordinates minus 2 11 and then we've got our point b 8 1 so we'll just go eight units across there and one unit up so we'll just say that that's the point b with coordinates 8 1 Okay, so we've got our diameter, okay, of our circle as AB, and we're trying to find the center, so you can see it's going to be the midpoint. Now, to get the midpoint of two points, we should be familiar with this, all we need to do is just work out what the mean of the x-coordinates are and the mean of the y-coordinates are. So, all we need to do is add our x coordinates together, minus 2 plus 8. I'm just going to show the working here though, otherwise it just looks like I've written down 3, 6, so it doesn't really show it, does it? Minus 2 plus 8 and divide that by 2, and then add together the y coordinates, that's 11 plus 1, and divide that all by 2. Okay, so mean of the x coordinates, mean of the y coordinates. And if you work this out, minus 2 add 8 is 6, divide by 2 is 3, and then 11 plus 1 is 12, divide by 2, which is 6. So we've got our midpoint here, the center of the circle, with coordinates 3, 6. So we'll just mark that in as 3, 6. Okay, let's call that M, say, for the midpoint. Right, okay, so that's part A for one mark. Now, for part B, okay, it says find an equation for C. Remember, C then is the circle that surrounds AB as the diameter. And uh, if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment again to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then, if you had a go. Now, to find the equation of the circle for C, should be familiar with the equation of a circle. Again, as a brief reminder, what it is, is x minus x1 all squared plus y minus y1 all squared equals r squared. x1, y1 are the coordinates of the center of the circle. So in this case, that's going to be 3 and 6. And r is the radius of the circle. So, in order to work out this equation then for the circle C, I need to get the radius, or even the radius squared. And to do this then, all I need to do is work out the distance, say, between M, the midpoint, and B, or M and the, midpo and the point A, with coordinates minus 2, 11. It's up to you, should give exactly the same answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the distance MB. So we use Pythagoras' theorem essentially when we're doing this. Think of a triangle drawn in here, okay? Then MB is the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle. 
So that would be the radius, and so you'd have r squared equals, and all we need to do is work out this side squared, which is the difference between the x-coordinates, that's 8 minus 3, which is really 5, I know that, but uh, just showing the working, that's 8 minus 3 all squared, that would be 5 squared there. And then you want this height squared, that's the difference in the y-coordinates, 6 minus 1, that 2 is going to be 5. Not that it looks like it in the sketch, but there we go. So that's going to be 6 minus 1 all squared. And if you work this out, 5 squared plus 5 squared, 25 plus 25, that's 50. OK, so therefore, we're in a position to quote the equation of C. So I'm just going to write a little subtitle here. Equation of C is, and it's going to be then, x minus x1, that's the x-coordinate then of the centre of the circle, that'd be 3 all squared plus y minus the y1 which was 6 all squared equals r squared which you've just seen is 50. Okay so there's our equation then for our circle or an equation don't have to expand it out if you want to you can but we've got basically the equation. Now for part c it says verify that the point 107 lies on C for one mark. Okay, so again, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so, just give you a moment to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So to verify this, all I need to do is just say when x equals 10, we're told that y equals 7. And it should satisfy this equation. So what I'm going to do is just substitute these values into the left hand side and hope that it comes to 50. So if we do that, okay, we've got 10 minus 3 all squared plus 7 minus 6 all squared equals, now I'm not going to charge in and write 50 because I don't really know that and it looks silly if it didn't. 10 minus 3 then gives us 7, so we've got 7 squared, and then we've got plus 7 minus 6, which is plus 1 squared. And so, therefore, we've got 49 plus 1, which indeed is 50. Okay, so therefore, 10, 7 does lie on C. So I'll just say that. Okay, 10, 7 lies on C. Right, moving on to part D now. It says, find an equation of the tangent to C at the point 10, 7. Giving your answer in the form y equals mx plus C, where m and C are constants for four marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this one, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, let's see how you got on if you had a go. Now, let's just mark on the diagram the point with coordinates 10, 7. Remember, this is not accurate, but 10, 7 is going to be to the right of the 8. It's going to be up here above that point there with y coordinate 6. So we'll just say it's, say, about there, OK? And so let's say we call this the point P with coordinates 10, 7. Now remember, we've got a circle going round here, so I'm just going to sketch something. Oops, that's not looking particularly good, is it? But uh, we'll assume that this is a decent circle, all right? OK, in fact, it'll look a bit better if I go out there, most probably. We'll just take that bit out. OK, there's my circle, and we're looking for the tangent at the point P. So let's say that it's a line, something like that. Now, if I had drawn this accurately, M to P, the radius here, we should know makes a right angle with the tangent. Now, although we've got to get this in the form Y equals MX plus C, whenever I'm working with lines, I never usually go for this format, okay? The one that I go for 
let's just write it in blue, is the form y minus y1, okay, equals m bracket x minus x1. Where x1, y1 we know is a point on the line, that would be the point P with coordinates 10, 7. I've just got to get M. And to get M, I'm going to work out the gradient of MP. And then I'm going to use the perpendicular gradient rule. That is the product of these two gradients equals minus 1 to get the gradient of the tangent. Then I've got the equation of the line. I can rearrange it to the form Y equals MX plus C. OK? So... Let's first of all then get the gradient of MP. So just introduce it here, gradient then of MP. And to get the gradient, it's the difference in the Y coordinates. So if we take 7 minus the 6 there, it's going to be 7 minus 6 divided by the difference in the X coordinates. So we started with the 7, so we use the 10 here, so it's going to be 10 minus the 3 here for m. And if you work this out, you've got 1 over 7. 1 seventh then is the gradient of mp. Very shallow gradient, so it's good to have a sketch anyway, so we can just check that everything's looking reasonable. OK, now that we've got the gradient of mp, we can say that the gradient of the tangent, OK, I'll put grad of tangent. Well, using the fact that the product of the gradient should equal minus 1 because they're perpendicular, then all we do is we switch the sign on the 1 7th, so it was a plus, it's now a minus, and turn the fraction upside down. So it's 7 over 1 or just simply minus 7. If you multiply these two together, you will get negative 1. So the gradient then of the tangent is minus 7. So we're in a position now to work out the equation of the tangent. So just put a little subtitle here. Equation of tangent then, okay, is, and what's it going to be? Well, it's going to be y minus y1, y1 being the 7, equals m, the gradient, which is minus 7, multiplied by x minus x1, x1 being the 10 here. And so if we expand the right hand side out, we end up with minus 7x plus 70. And now if we were to add 7 to both sides, we get it in the form y equals minus 7x and 70 plus another 7 is 77. It's in the form y equals mx plus c. Gradient to minus 7 and the 77 would be where this line would cross the y-axis way up. Okay, so there you go. All right.